All right, so good morning, everyone. My name is Jesse, and I am with Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. If you're joining us for the first time, and I think we do have some groups on, on YouTube and live joining us for the first time, we are all about bringing conservation, adventure, and science into classrooms around the world. So just last week, we partnered with OceanWise at the Vancouver Aquarium for an amazing penguin talk. You can check that still out on our YouTube channel. But today, we're switching gears a little bit with them. So we've done 20, 30 plus programs with uh, OceanWise over the last few years, always exciting to highlight amazing things that they've got going on education programs and otherwise today we're taking a bit of a different tack so we are talking about careers in conservation highlighting all the different ways you can get involved in helping protect species habitats and more so to all our groups joining on youtube we are uh, there's usually a bit of interaction with these programs so stay tuned at your computer at your keyboard if we ask you guys any questions i'll be looking for all your answers in the chat bar we also might have some people tuning in from edinburgh today so if you're joining us welcome in let me know in the chat bar that you're here and without further ado, let's turn it over to Daphne at OceanWise to take us away and blow all our minds. Daphne, thanks so much for joining us today. Go for it. Thanks so much for having me, Jesse. Again, my name's Daphne. Uh, I am an online specialist in uh, online learning and ocean literacy here with OceanWise. So if you haven't heard of OceanWise before, we're a global not-for-profit uh, whose mission is to have a world in which our oceans are healthy and flourishing. So we like to have positions where people can help us, uh, you know, make a positive difference on our planet. And it takes, you know, they say that it takes a village to raise a child, definitely takes a huge variety of people to help make change happen. But as you might notice today, I am in the Vancouver Aquarium, which is one part of OceanWise. It's how we can get people engaged and excited about the ocean and our planet. We also do lots of education, research, and other forms of engagement. But that does mean I am in Stanley Park in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And that means I'm on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil First Nations. So I feel very grateful to be able to be on their land today and to be able to talk to you about how we can conserve the natural world around us so that it can keep giving back to us. And that's a super important thing to remember. Uh, and it's a super important thing to be involved in too. If you do want to help the ocean or help our planet, be more sustainable or survive into the future. Now, I would love to know, so let us know in the chat, uh, if you are interested in a career in conservation or maybe biology or sciences, maybe arts, what are you interested in for a potential career or what just interests you in your day-to-day -day life? So I've got the chat open on YouTube. Mr. Dayrip, too, if you want to type in the chat bar, if any of your kids have any thoughts, please do. Uh, there's a chat bar right on the right of your screen. I know we've got students in North Carolina joining us. If you're coming in from anywhere else across Canada, the U.S., or around the world, let me know where you're coming in from. I'd love to have that knowledge. Um, and then, yeah, share away in the chat bar throughout the broadcast. Nothing just yet, Daphne. Again, it might be a little slow morning for a lot of our people here. Um, but keep diving in. And if we get any more feedback, I'll uh, bring it in and let you know. <laughs> Awesome. Well, you know what? No matter what you're interested in, there's usually a way to connect it to conservation. And conservation just meaning that we want to help protect or help, uh, you know, sustain life on this planet. So if you're interested in gaming, there are still ways to connect that to the ocean. I mean, here at OceanWise, we actually have uh, scientists that fly drones, those, you know, remote control helicopters above whales or other animals, sometimes even to collect boogers. So if there are any of you that think that boogers are really silly or really gross, maybe that's a career for you. You could collect orca boogers and learn more about their family tree or who's related to who through their boogers. Who would have thought? So there's lots of different things you can use to connect. Now, I wanna share just a 
a few of the people that we have here at OceanWise and some of their backgrounds, because you might be surprised at the skills needed to help an aquarium or a conservation organization survive. So I'm going to share my screen here. Give me a quick second. While you're doing that, we have students that are interested in journalism and maybe minoring in biology on YouTube. So there you go. <laughs> Amazing. Those are some great ways to connect back to conservation. And you know what? I am in the Vancouver Aquarium today, as you can see. But there are so many different people from so many different backgrounds having lots of fun helping out our planet. And I just want to let you, you know, get to know us at OceanWise real quick. So hopefully this video will play for us. I'm a friend of the ocean. I'm an interpreter of the ocean. I'm a really big fan of the ocean. I am a child of the ocean. I am a geek of the ocean. <laughs> I am a voice for the ocean. I am constantly amazed by the ocean. I am deeply moved by the ocean. I am mesmerized by the ocean. I am humbled in the presence of the ocean. I am extremely protective of the ocean. I am highly concerned for the ocean. I am a defender of the ocean. I am a guardian of the ocean. I am a diehard supporter of the ocean. I'm a fighter for the ocean. I'm truly appreciative of the ocean every moment of every day. I'm an advocate for all the animals in the ocean. I'm truly grateful for the ocean. I am here to protect the future of the ocean. We're all connected to the ocean. Let's be ocean wise. All right, well, we got to see, uh, you know, some of the people or some of the reasons why people might get involved with ocean conservation and a lot of people think that it looks like this that you are out in the field you might be underwater doing surveys and that is a huge part of the job for some people involved in conservation but that's not the only way that you can get involved so i have just a, a little word mat, word cloud here of some of the job titles that we have here at OceanWise. And it shows you the variety of different, uh, you know, skills that people are gonna need from anything from taking care of the animals such as the uh, stellar sea lions behind me today to people that are helping make sure that you have a great experience here at the aquarium or that you have cool videos or information online to get. You know, there's lots of different ways to help out. And I do want to introduce us to a few uh, folks and why they got involved in ocean conservation or conservation in general. So I'll start us off with Chelsea. Uh, my name is Chelsea Ryan. I am one of the biologists here at the aquarium and I work primarily with birds like Chino. Uh, when I went to university, I went with the intent of becoming a dentist. I thought that was a really good career for me. But when I was in university, I started taking more ecology classes, more animal behavior, more evolution. And I found out pretty quickly, I'm much more into ornithology than I am into teeth. I was obsessed with animals as a child. I think a lot of children are, um, and I never really grew out of it. Working with the animals, um, I do a lot of feeding, a lot of cleaning. Um, a lot of training as well. These guys are highly intelligent, um, so they keep us on our toes. They do something or say something, and you laugh, they're more likely to do it again. So we got to meet uh, a little bit of Chelsea, who is one of our animal care experts here at the Vancouver Aquarium. Um, Even with we have lots of different folks helping us uh, take care of the animals and help us learn more from them. So the animals here in our care, they are here to teach us more and help us know how to 
help the creatures that are out in the wild still. So they are ambassadors for their species. And we'll meet another one with Ruby here. My name is Ruby Van Wyk. I am a senior aquarium biologist at the Vancouver Aquarium with the Fishes Department. I had no idea what I wanted to do. And I realized that I needed to stop for a moment and really think about what I enjoyed out of my life. And everything came back to the ocean. So I realized, hey, maybe I should volunteer and see what is out there. Um, Vancouver Aquarium offers a really wide variety of things that are ocean related. So it was an easy step for me. And I realized uh, once I started that this is my passion. All of my favorite memories, everything that I could think of in my life that I love the most came back to the sea. I'm lucky enough to work with giant sea octopus, and right now we have a couple that are just fantastic. They're very wonderful and interactive, very, very smart. Um, I think that's why I really like them, because I can see that they're processing information about me, just like I am about them. So in each suction cup, uh, an octopus has chemoreceptors, so they're actually an actual fact tasting every time they're touching you. And for me, that's how they're exploring the world. But everyone has a different chemical makeup. So I think that they know that I'm different than my colleague that looks after them. So in that respect, I kind of feel like we have quite an intimate relationship because they know exactly who I am by tasting my skin. To young women who want to be scientists, I would say that it takes the strength and courage that you actually have in order to be able to achieve your goals. It's a lot easier to limit yourself by doubting yourself, and I think it takes a lot more strength in order to really believe in who you are and what you can accomplish. All right, so we got to meet uh, two ladies that help with animal care here at the Vancouver Aquarium. But the next video I have uh, is someone else, uh, Stuart Tsai, who uh, is a a uh, very popular underwater photographer. And I think it's really great to hear his story of, you know, finding what his passion was. So take a look. My family is a very, uh, fairly conservative Asian family. And when they found out that I was going to scuba diving, one of my aunts actually said, oh my God, your head's going to explode. Rather than implode, which is what technically should happen. They were also freaked out, even though they were living in the Philippines and they had a beach house. They would walk out onto the beach with an umbrella. They wouldn't go in the water. When I finally did die and started telling them about what awesome things there are, that's why I wanted to take pictures, was to show them. And plus, the knowledge of the Chinese diet, of sea cucumbers and all that. See, this is what you're eating. This is what it looks like a lot. I mean, at first, my pictures were horrible. But as I got better, you know, oh, you actually know what you're doing. It's very nice. And then when you're in a fairly traditional Asian household, praise that it's not abusive. So when they say, oh, you know what you're doing, that actually is fairly high pressure, especially when my like, dad is doing that. So that was, that was a big thing. All right. So we got to learn some folks that, uh, you know, are really involved with the ocean, but those folks might work a little bit more closely with animals, but that's not the only way to get involved. We have folks such as Evan, who is really making sure that everything at the Vancouver Aquarium runs effectively. You've ever been able to visit uh, the Vancouver Aquarium or another aquarium. There is definitely um, you know, lots of electricians or engineers who are making everything work day to day, uh, just like Evan, our head electrician here at the Vancouver Cram, even making sure that I have lights to light me up today. Uh, and then we also have folks that need to be able to keep uh, the animals safe and make sure that guests have any first aid uh, attended to. So that's folks like Spencer who are making sure that everyone stays safe uh, and you know there to support us. But you also need folks that are going to help you know, raise money, especially if you are involved with a not-for-profit such as OceanWise in the Vancouver Aquarium. Uh, Samantha is just one of our folks who is trying to raise money or you know, look for grant opportunities to help us do the work that we do. 
And that is a huge uh, need for a lot of not-for-profits that work in conservation. But you can even be really interested in anything such as food. So we have lots of staff uh, who help with catering or special events who are really passionate about using sustainable seafood. So items or seafood items that we can keep taking from the ocean and uh, they can keep giving back because we're careful about wit, what and how and where we're getting that seafood from. And it even comes all the way back to art. I know that you might hear that art and science are very interlaced and that is so true. Uh, Denise is one of those folks making sure that you understand what the science is and help you connect with it. So she creates things such as ways for you to know how to dispose of your waste or to educate you about a certain animal to even helping with projects where, uh, you know, this was a project that we did with some art students at some local universities who built these structures to help create artificial reefs for rockfish. So we're needing more habitats for those rockfish as some of it gets destroyed. And these pieces got to actually go into the Howe Sound uh, right here north of Vancouver between us and Squamish. So there's so many different ways to get involved, so many different backgrounds. No matter what it is that you are really passionate about, there is likely a way to connect it. So I'd love to know, you know, what are you interested in? What questions do you have? What do you want to know about careers in conservation? Fantastic. Well, thank you so, so much, Dowdy, for such a quick tour. I love the amazing diversity of careers we got a chance to showcase and the, the people on YouTube loved it too, so that's awesome. Uh, if you are on YouTube, start sharing questions in the chat bar. We got kids in Vancouver, we got kids in North Carolina and beyond. Love to hear your queries there. Mr. David, I'm going to come to you in just a second in Ontario to see if you have some thoughts. One thing I wanted to cover, uh, Daphne, is what are you guys conserving? We're talking about careers in conservation today, ocean-wise specifically. Are there specific animals you guys are working on, working with, trying to protect above all others? You talked about orca snot, which is pretty cool. So if you could highlight a little bit of that, that would be awesome. Yeah, so we have lots of different creatures here at the Vancouver Aquarium, and many of them are actually involved in uh, research or helping us better understand those species. So the uh, stellar sea lions behind me have been involved in many different uh, scientific studies uh, that are even published. So others can actually use that data to help us understand uh, sea lions in the wild and you know what they need to give them a healthy life. But we do have lots of creatures that might be even uh, endangered. So we have some uh, African penguins here, which are uh, in many aquariums around North America and other places, because they're actually an endangered species and we're trying to help uh, conserve that population uh, and do a bit of a breeding program as well. So to try and do that. Uh, we also have lots of organ spotted frogs that we are raising and trying to release into their natural environment as that species uh, numbers go down and their habitat gets destroyed as well. But there's so many different things that we focus on here, raising uh, populations or even trying to, uh, we even have a lab here that tries to have different species reproduce. So that's fish or maybe some invertebrates that aquariums would like to be able to raise on their own so that you know, the aquarium industry would not need to collect any from the wild. So there's lots of different ways for that to happen. We like to focus on uh, lots of climate change, uh, things that are affecting our planet, as well as habitat destruction, uh, you know, ocean acidification, uh, sustainable seafood, and even we're getting into a uh, kelp ecosystems and how uh, seaforestation is a problem as well. So there's lots of different topics to cover. 
Which is one of the nice things about zoos and aquaria that I think a lot of people are starting to realize, and certainly you guys have been pushing out really heavily, is this idea that it's not just a repository for amazing animals. And it is that. If you ever get a chance to go to Stanley Park, visit the Vancouver Aquarium, it is amazing. But zoos and aquaria are becoming the conservation hubs of the world, whether that's research, uh, education work, all these amazing, amazing uh, programs that you guys are up to, like you mentioned today. So do check them out. One thing that I, I would encourage all our kids tuning in to do whenever you go to a zoo or aquarium is look for CAZA or AZA accreditation. So this is the Association of Zoos and Aquariums or the Canadian equivalent. And what this means is that the organization is at the highest standards of animal care. They're really out for protecting species. They're out for making sure that they're not taken in an unsustainable way. So look for those certifications and that means you're going to a really fantastic place. Uh, Toronto Zoo we work with, Vancouver Aquarium, lots of amazing groups. So check that out. Awesome, guys. All right, let's go to Mr. Dayrit's class. If you have a, oh, Mr. Dayrit's class, if no questions yet said, that's totally fine. Type in the chat bar. If you do have any, let me know. I'll take some from YouTube while we're waiting. So, um, Tavin in uh, North Carolina, Raleigh, North Carolina, wants to know, as an 11-year-old, what can they do to help conserve the ocean? That's a great question. There's so many things that you can do from anything as simple as just telling other people about the ocean or something cool that you know of about our planet. That's what we're trying to do by having zoos and aquariums is show people how special these animals and these ecosystems are so that they also want to help. So there's so many great ways for that to happen. Thanks. Now, a really easy way you can also do that is by reducing your waste. So we create a lot of plastic, a lot of pollution. Canada's actually uh, at the top in the world for producing uh, garbage per person. So we create the most garbage for our population. Mm -hmm. And it's really easy to make more sustainable choices by not choosing single use plastics or trying to reuse things, as well as if you see litter on the ground and it's safe to pick up, do so if you are able to safely. I know that with COVID-19, that's a little bit harder these days, but if you feel comfortable doing it, it's a great way to help as well. Fantastic, guys. On the, the, the theme of, of cool things that people can do directly, we've got some students in Vancouver, so I'll, I'll show you Annabelle's question. Um, so in Vancouver, does the aquarium have opportunities for youth volunteers when you reopen, or you guys are open now to the public, I assume? So tell us more. We are we were open to the public at during the summer for a while. We are closed currently. Okay. Uh, so we are lower on volunteer opportunities right now, although normally when we are open, we do have quite a lot of youth opportunities. Uh, and I'm sure that there are local aquariums or zoos uh, in other places that would do that as well. We even have uh, you know, kids can join even with their parents. So, you and your parents can help volunteer as well. Right now, there's more limited opportunities, but uh, there may be some posted online, uh, more, more, you know, virtually. And fingers crossed that we all have the opportunity to go back and do these sort of amazing opportunities soon. But in the meantime, do check out OceanWise's education page, or just put it at the bottom of the page. It is quite literally the most robust series of programs on ocean education, literacy, et cetera, uh, in the entire world. So there's amazing, amazing stuff on any topic you can imagine to do with the sea and beyond. Uh, so I really encourage you guys to check that out when you're done. And I would say that, uh, you know, even if you can't volunteer for an organization, there's lots of ways to get involved with conservation through community or citizen science. So uh, there's lots of websites. We even have some uh, posted in some of our online resources. Uh, lots of ways where you can, anything from counting penguins or jellyfish to helping scientists identify if there's animals in a video that they've taken. Yeah. And that's literally helping scientists with their own data so that you are contributing to active conservation by doing that. There are so many opportunities now. So on the bottom of our screen, I've got backyardbio.net. So this is our big backyard bio program coming in May, which hopefully our class of today are keen on signing up for. We've got a ton of youth activities, building bat boxes, planting pollinator gardens. Uh, there are so many things now, like when, when Daphne and I were kids, there were none of these opportunities. There's so much you can do now to take part in real conservation. It's amazing. So check that out. Check out the Education Ocean Wise site. There's just so many opportunities out there. It's awesome. All right, let me share a question from, um, again, the Greca family in North Carolina. Vancouver Aquarium connect and share research work with other aquariums. 
Yes, we definitely do. And, you know, uh, especially with the other uh, CASA or uh, AZA organizations that have that top care uh, and are really looking to focus on conservation instead of, you know, just having animals to share with others. Uh, but we, uh, we do help other organizations too. We've even helped aquariums start up and help them know how they can have you know, the best level of care for their creatures, as well as uh, even do research with other organizations. We actually have done quite a lot of research with the University of British Columbia as well. Uh, even in the past, having our stellar sea lions go out into the wild, into the ocean with researchers, wear a vest that measures their heart rate and how long they dive for to get a better idea of how much energy they use when they're diving for food. So just like you might uh, train a dog to do a behavior, uh, the sea lions would be trained to go do a dive out in the ocean and then come back. So no, no leash required. Those those animals are very food motivated. So getting easy meals is a great uh, way to get them to come back. Fair. And that helped a lot with knowing what those sea lions need and especially food wise. You're talking about them and they're just photobombing you relentlessly because they're excited about food. They hear it through the glass. It's very exciting. Um, so we have a question from Mr. Derek's class. Uh, this came in on YouTube as well. So if you're breeding animals, won't they get used to getting fed and not be able to adapt to the wild? So can you explain a little bit about the process of having animals in captivity and if they're meant to be released back into the wild or what you keep on site at the aquarium? I think there's a question a lot of kids have when we talk about uh, animals in captivity. That is a great question. So certain animals uh, that may, may be bred here. So, uh, you know, if there were, we aren't breeding our penguins, but if there were penguins bred at another, at another facility, they would likely uh, be uh, not released back into the wild per se, but maybe to other aquariums for more education to help raise awareness for that species. Um, but you know, if it's say a, a fish or uh, our frogs, the organ spotted frogs, those are released. So our animals in our care, we treat them as wild animals as much as possible. And that means that those animals uh, still will have to you know, find their food. Uh, it's some of the larger marine mammals that may not have that same uh, capability, but the any marine mammals that we're, uh, you know, getting today or that we've gotten recently, uh, they have been deemed unreleasable by the Department of Fisheries and Oceans in Canada, which means they would not be able to survive on their own. So you may not have noticed, but uh, some of the sea lions in here, one of them uh, is completely blind and one is actually missing an eye. So they would not survive on their own. So they live here. I'm really glad we got a chance to cover all that nuance. There's so much to, you know, sort of the varying degrees and what animals are in captivity and how they're kept and what the process is. Uh, it's something that kids are always fascinated with. So thank you so much, Daphne. Um, all right, another question from Mr. Dayritz's class. Have you ever gotten attached to any specific animals personally? And do you look into coral reefs at all as an organization, I guess? Great questions. Uh, I have worked also in a different part of our education department, traveling to different communities uh, and bringing the ocean to them. So we had some very hardy intertidal animals such as sea stars, sea urchins, uh, and maybe some hermit crabs that uh, could be those example animals of the ocean for them to look at. So we had uh, large aquariums on wheels that we could bring into schools or community uh, buildings. Wow. And those animals I would spend so much time with, you get really attached. But just like any other animal care staff here at the Vancouver Aquarium and OceanWise, because we spend so much time with those animals, we know when they are you know, not behaving as normal. So even that urchin that doesn't even have a brain, I still spend so much time with it. I know when it's not having a good day and I'll make sure that it gets to rest and get the recovery that it needs to, you know, figure out what is happening and how we can make it feel better. Yeah, super cool, Daphne. Um, so you talked about all these amazing careers. I wanna focus on yours as one last question before we wrap up. So you're obviously super, super enthusiastic about all this. If I'm a kid and I want to end up with your career, getting to talk about all these amazing wildlife careers, sort of be the face of the aquarium, how do I get that job? Like, what was your educational background? What should I be doing if I'm 10 years old and I'm really keen to end up being you when I grow up? 
<laughs> well, I will say that I, in particular, do have an undergraduate degree from the University of British Columbia. Uh, I ended up doing an oceanography degree, so more of the large picture of the ocean and how the ocean affects uh, the planet and the animals around it, uh, which I really liked. So I didn't do more of the animal side of things, but I still had that passion for creatures and for protecting our planet and oceans. So I actually did quite a bit of uh, volunteering uh, in different ways. So I, you know, volunteered in labs, helping with, uh, you know, doing some research. I also did some work with some uh, doing extra background research for different projects to see, you know, what I really liked. And it was actually some of the volunteering with uh, outreach groups, communicating science to others that I enjoyed the most. So as much as I saw myself in front of a microscope for the rest of my life, I actually figured out that I like talking to people more. So I ended up volunteering at the Vancouver Aquarium in one of our education department programs uh, in the wet lab, and then got a job uh, later on with our uh, Aquavan or our mobile programs, and now for online programs. You, so you started with microscope, now you get microphone. It's a great full circle, I love it. Uh, and this is the thing, you know, you mentioned volunteering and finding your passion. It was mentioned in a few of the videos as well. So for kids at home, no matter what age you are, if you go to organizations like Aquaria, like zoos, like universities, and you're really keen, you're really passionate about things, in most instances, there'll be some way that you can take part, help out, learn more, and get involved. And so many of the people we bring on these broadcasts begin their lives doing volunteer gigs, uh, finding that passion, and then getting excited and turning it into a career. So make sure to do that. Uh, keep the education going. Check out OceanWise's amazing education resources. And then when you can, uh, when things are open, make sure to get those volunteer opportunities at whatever age you are. So. Daddy, this is great. Thank you so, so much for joining us today. Uh, again, I want to bring in uh, on the bottom of the screen our education.ocean.org. Uh, so many amazing resources to check out. I really encourage you to do so. Penguin presentation was last week. And as always, we will have more with OceanWise in the weeks and, and months to come. So stay tuned for those. Um, Daddy, any last message you want to share before we wrap up for the day? I would just say same thing that Jesse said and that any staff member I've ever asked for tips for folks wanting to get involved in conservation, every single one says volunteer or use the opportunities that you have because it really shows you what you like and dislike. And even if that organization or group might be best for you or maybe isn't. Yeah. So definitely use those opportunities uh, and community science is also a great way to check that out as well. Fantastic. So I hope all our kids head to iNaturalist, head to BackyardBio.net, check out Zooniverse and other amazing programs. So all sorts of resources. Hope to uh, have you guys tune in there. Share with us on at Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants on Twitter. If you do, we'd love to hear your stories. Until then.